Almost exactly 10 years ago, Swift Alternator was released in the 2010 Final Lap Collection. I remember it distinctly. I'm not even joking. It was around this time, like late summer, early fall of 2010. And I believe he was in the case with Derek Decals Dobbs, Hooman, and Coriander Wide Track. And I found it at Target. It was a great moment. And I just love those memories that stay with you. And it just becomes so iconic and nostalgic in your mind. But unlike those other three cars I just mentioned, Swift is the only one to not have been re released. And Therefore, he has become kind of overlooked. Take it for what you will. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that he hasn't been re-released? But either way, he is underrated and he is forlorn. So welcome back, guys, to Forlorn Favorites here on the Disney Docket channel. This is episode five. I'm super excited to introduce, of course, the feature Swift Alternator, Swifty as I like to call him. This is a really cool character. I really want to dive into him here. And we're just going to jump right in. So I have a package version here. I'm not going to open it, but I just wanted to show it for the sake of the episode. So of course you have the final lap collection foil emblem up here with Derek Decals Dobbs waving the white flag there. You have kind of like the metropolitan city background. You can even see a Vitaline and RPM sponsored building. Nice little artwork for Swift. He is number 158. And the numbers were pretty arbitrary, but Mattel was trying to go for something with them. Complete your collection. It's the final lap and a race to the finish. Collect 40 never produced 155 scale die cast vehicles of characters from the Cars movie, but don't speed by any classic you missed the first time around. That's awesome, I really do like that because they did release a lot of new cars in this series and they even have like a little checklist here, of course, Skip Richter, Polly Polo Jumper, Blowing Bubbles Mater, Antonio, Los Excelente, Muddy Lightning McQueen, Costanza Del Corza, Pick Remember Sarge, One Eye Mayor, Donna Pitts, Nick Stickers, Wet Lightning McQueen, Vern J. Limo, and Race, Damage Smooth Springs. Those are all new to the final lap and they did have very few re-releases in this series, being like Chick Hicks, Radiator Springs, Lightning McQueen, Green Ramon, and stuff like that. I think Dexter Hoover was also in this series. But yeah, Swift was one of the new ones, and he was actually one of the last Final Lap cars to be released. So I'll be right back with this guy opened up, which is that guy, not unboxing this rarity, because he is kind of rare, actually. He's not the rarest Final Lap car you would be able to get, but he is up there. So although Swifty doesn't have any flags or antennas or stuff like that, he is a Piston Cup fan. He is shown at the end of cars after the race in the infield with all the RVs, which is a little interesting. You know, you don't see too many regular quote-unquote cars in the infield, but he was one of them there with the RVs, which is interesting. I guess maybe he couldn't afford it or he was a friend of the RVs and wanted to hang out with them. But either way, he is there and... He's cheering on to the fact that Lightning McQueen just pushed the king across the finish line. I think they nailed his expression. You know, it's not quite like it is on the card back here, but regardless, you know, he looks very close to the movie. I feel like they did that so well with some of these final lap characters like Milo. His expression is spot on. And we'll talk a little bit more about Milo in a second. Kit Revster, even more so spot on. He is not a final lap card, but he was actually supposed to be. Unfortunately, though, he got canceled in 2010 and then re-released in 2013 and then 2015 and then 2016 and 2017, I think. But anyway, getting back on track here with Swift, he's an SUV and a rather small one at that. If you take like Benny Brake Drum here, he is giant compared to Swift. Karevster, also an SUV. They're pretty comparable in size. You know, they both have the roof rack, but one of them's just longer being Kit and then Swift is a little taller. I really do like the model though. They've never used it again. And although, you know, they never did, he was actually supposed to be used on the Benny Brake Drum model, I think, who was canceled. So there's a picture of Benny. Looks very, very similar to Swift. So I would argue that the models would have been the same, but who knows, Mattel might have actually switched it up a tad. So yeah, he's got his grill there. He's got the headlights. Love that expression. Of course, he does have this mouth plate here, which is plastic, but the colors are pretty similar, so I'm not really complaining or squabbling about that. You have the side view mirrors, nice rims. There's the base. 
roof rack is an extra plastic piece. And on the back here, his license plate is T6ID635. Don't know the significance of that, but I don't think it was really ever used again. So unlike a lot of the cars in this era, like I'm pretty sure Kit, I don't know, maybe not Kit, but a lot of them had this M115 license plate or something along those lines. And that was a very popular one that they overused a lot, but I don't think this one was. And the text above it reads bottom end. So I don't know exactly what that means either. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. Now, I like the final lap collection a lot because they released a lot of background cars like Swifty here that you could use in the background of, you know, replicas or like reenactments, stop motion, stuff like that. Like these three cars there, all background characters that you could use a lot like that. I think it's really cool. And I'm happy that they're building the universe by releasing some of these more background characters. But, you know, you can still see them in the movie. It's not like they are as hidden as some of the characters that Mattel releases, Cough, Cough, Frank Lachensen. But yeah, that is all for Swifty. We don't have really many good cars to compare him to. I think Swift, or I mean, Kit Repster is the best or closest comparison. They all have roof racks here. And obviously, Benny Brake Drum is just way bigger and Benny's also the same model as Murphy. And just for size comparison, here are the other Sarge's boot camp cars. So you have Frank Pinkerton, who's even bigger, and Charlie Cargo. So both green SUVs that are a little long, but still way bigger. I also have Van here, just for laughs and giggles, another green SUV. These guys are also rather similar just based on size and i just have a couple cars two suvs here like alex vandell alex vandell is a really cool car i like alex a lot actually now that i think about it and officer murakami as well because why the heck not so yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching episode five of Forlorn Favorites. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next week for episode six. Milo, I do have to say, you know, I was going to talk about him again, and I'm going to hold true to that, but he was in contention also to be in Forlorn Favorites. I have to be honest, him and Swifty are very forgotten in my opinion. They don't get enough attention, and they've only been released once ever. So it would be cool to see them again, or I would not mind even if they didn't get released again, just because it maintains their value. And it's also kind of like a happy medium because they only get released once, but they're also not that expensive. Like if you go on eBay, Milo's in the 10 to $15 range and Swifty's in like the $30 range. So really pretty affordable if you think about it for only being released one time. And, you know, like I said, it maintains kind of a little bit of mystique to them and just keeps the value up there. So thanks again for watching. I will see you next time. Bye now.